We have looked at state variable modeling of dynamic systems so far. Now we move on to analyzing these models. Some techniques for analysis first transform the state variable model to another form and then extract certain properties from the transformed model. Today we'll be looking at the first step, transforming a state variable model. We will look at two transformations, transforming a state variable model to another state variable model and transforming a state variable model to a transfer function. The definition of the states of a system is not unique. If we choose a different set of states and transform the model accordingly, then we can transform the state variable model to a different state variable model. For this transformation, we start with an original state variable system. The transformation of states is given by this equation where x is our, our original state vector, p is a non-singular transformation matrix and x bar is the new state vector. The dynamics of the system described in terms of the new states are given by these state variable equations where the new A matrix is written in terms of the transformation matrix as well as the old A matrix and similarly for the other state, state matrices. It is important to note that the dynamics of the system did not change. The dynamics of the system is just described in terms of different states. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have a second order system with the original state variable system as described by these system matrices. The transformation matrix that transforms the original states x to the new states x bar is given by this matrix. For our calculations of the new state matrices, we need the inverse of the transformation matrix as well, which is given by 1 over the determinant times the adjoint matrix, which results in this matrix. The new A matrix, A bar, is given by the inverse of the transformation matrix times the old A matrix times the transformation matrix and after multiplying these matrices together we get this matrix. The new B vector is given by the inverse of the transformation matrix times the old B vector and this results in the following row vector. The new uh, C vector C bar is given by the old C vector times the transformation matrix which, which results in this row vector and the new scalar D is the same as the original scalar D which is equal to zero. By analyzing the new state matrices, it might now be possible to extract properties of the system that we might not have seen from the original state matrices. The second transformation we look at is the transformation from a state variable model to a transfer function. If our state variable model is described by the standard state variable equations, the transfer function from the input u to the output y is given by this equation where A, B, C and D are the system matrices, S is the Laplace variable and I is the identity matrix. SI minus A is a matrix and should be inverted. This inverted matrix can be written as the adjoint matrix divided by the determinant of the matrix. The denominator of the transfer function is therefore de the determinant of SI minus A. By setting the denominator of the transfer function to zero, we can calculate the poles of the system. This is also the characteristic equation. Let's look at an example. The state variable system uh, is the same as the one on the previous page. And we want to calculate its transfer function. 
Let's calculate matrix SI minus A first. We multiply the Laplace variable with the identity matrix and subtract the matrix A, which gives us um, the following matrix, which is written in terms of the Laplace variable S. The adjoint of this matrix is given by the following. We can now write the numerator of the transfer function as vector C times the adjoint of matrix SI minus A times vector B, which gives us the answer of 1. The determinant of SI minus A is given by S squared plus 3S plus 2. And the transfer function can then be written as follows. The characteristic equation is the determinant of SI minus A equal to 0. And after solving this equation, we calculate the poles to be at minus 1 and minus 2. By transforming a state variable equation to a transfer function formulation, we can now use all the analysis techniques developed for transfer functions.